As the culture goes, so does the church. Lessons from Bill Maher. This is Wretched Radio, like a blind knife that finds a squirrel in the shed twice a day. Bill Maher, a classic liberal, not a progressive fellow, not a libertarian, although he's kind of getting close. A classic liberal concerned about the division in America. And perhaps you're wondering, what does that have to do with the church? I think as the culture goes, so does the church. Haven't we learned that from poll after poll, statistic after statistic? The world starts thinking like this, and it creeps into the church like battery acid and has the exact same effect. Bill Maher is referring to a little poll that was taken by a congresswoman asking, hey, do you think it's time for a national divorce? Ben Shapiro thought, yeah, probably a good idea. And whilst I definitely am interested and concerned for the state of our nation, it concerns me more to consider the state of the church. We are seeing divisions everywhere. We are seeing former friends, now enemies. We are seeing people that we used to partake of with their teachings and enjoy now being set outside of the camp because they don't agree with us on this or that. And at this rate, a a two-party church, not a chance. It'll be every man for himself. This will be the fellow on the deserted island with three sheds, his house, his church, and his own, his old church. That's where we're headed if we do not learn some lessons from Bill Maher. If we want to halt this descent into civil war, we have to stop hating each other. I wonder how much of that is going on inside of the evangelical church where there's a whole lot of hating going on, at least on the Internet. The reason I say that many won't like that answer is because the act of hating people you don't exactly agree with has become so ingrained, so routine for so many people. I think if they stopped, they'd miss it. I wonder if that isn't just true for the world, but for us also. The Christian community responds pretty much the same way that secularists do when it comes to reading a headline, when it comes to reading a subject line, when it comes to reading the description on a YouTube video. If it's sensationalistic, if there's gnashing of teeth, the views go up. I know it. We've seen it here. If we put up a title that's rather sensationalistic, especially if it's dish on somebody, well, the numbers go up. When it's just plain Bible teaching, the numbers don't. I wonder if Bill Maher could help us. It's become so normalized now. We don't even notice how often someone online is wishing someone dead. Anyone we disagree with about anything is evil incarnate, and every argument goes from zero to homicide. (laughs) Bill could be on a Christian talk show right now. Now, maybe it's not death that we think of, but it's definitely... Not too difficult to find somebody being labeled a heretic, a false teacher. They have never been orthodox because they disagree on a non-essential cardinal doctrine. Are we too much like the world these days? It doesn't even have to be about anything important or consequential. You insulted gossip girl, prepare to die. (laughs) You don't agree with my take on this legislation? You don't agree with my attitude toward this politician? Well, then we cancel each other. (laughs) 
There's a moment in my stand-up act these days where I ask the audience rhetorically, what should happen to all of the people who enabled Trump when he was in office? And about half the time, someone shouts out, kill them or hang them. You know, besides the fact that wishing people dead is a terrible place for your mind to be, if you're wishing them dead, you can be sure they're wishing you dead. Um, okay, let's move away from homicide to just attitudes toward one another. That when we cancel somebody, in a sense, that is akin to murder. What? Don't forget what Jesus said. If you call your brother a fool, you're in danger of the judgment. John says, if you call, if you are angry at your brother, if you are unrighteously annoyed with them, it's committing murder in the heart. When we cancel one another, set one another on the sidelines, pretty soon the sidelines are populated and the field is going to be pretty bare. But it's the same effect of murder, isn't it? You just want people out of your life. I, I just don't want to deal with these people. I don't want this person entering into my orbit. We can do that in our families, and we can most certainly do it online. You want a real war, liberals? Really? You think you're going to win the I want you dead war? You're not. You're going to lose. They have way more guns, and they know how to use them. And with all due respect, no one can do hate like a right-wing conservative. Now, this is, a, this is interesting. This is going to be a challenge for Bill Maher going forward. How does he, with one side of his mouth, lecture people to be nicer, and then out of the other side of his mouth, make caustic remarks like that? <laughs> This past Saturday, I was in the great city of Pittsburgh, PA, and the man who drove me in from the airport was from Bosnia. He was there in Sarajevo in 1984 when they had the Olympics. And he left sometime after that city became a war-torn hellscape. And he said to me, what I am seeing happening here now is exactly what I saw in Bosnia, next-door neighbors who despise each other. He was telling me that hate on this level can only be sustained for so long before becoming actual war. One wonders if that war hasn't already broken out inside of the evangelical community. One wonders. Last year, a, war, a warehouse blew up in Beirut, Lebanon. Everyone agreed it was an accident. But last week, there was a march calling for the removal of the judge investigating the incident, and it turned into a street fight with automatic rifles and rocket-propelled grenades. Over that most emotional of all issues, warehouse safety. Because when people despise each other, it doesn't matter what the issues are. When someone hates you, they don't hear what you're saying. <laughs> If you or I are guilty of going after somebody, now I'm not talking about identifying those that cause division to avoid them, to label them. That absolutely has its place. That's not what is in view here. This is the fighting with people online over things. Wow. I would like to think we wouldn't be fighting over them in Sunday school where we could be having a glazed donut together and seeing each other face to face. And yet, online, look out, it's a Christian Donnybrook. Let alone, let alone want to work with you on an issue. Today's Republicans don't have issues. Oh, they have issues. <laughs> Just not like the ones they used to have. Balanced budget. <laughs> they care about that about as much as they care about the new season of RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> Owning the libs is the only issue. Obamacare wasn't a horrible or radical policy. It was desperately needed by many of the people who fought it. But it came from... But it came from the people they hated. 
That's an interesting observation, not the only one to make it. Recently, a high-profile theologian said, that's precisely why some people don't want to take the jab. They don't want to agree with people they normally disagree with. Not persuaded of that, but there are times when we draw lines that, frankly, shouldn't exist. And I wonder if we don't need to learn some lessons from Bill Maher. Hold on. (laughs) Oh, ow, ow, that hurt. Now, Bill Maher, we're going to see how he does in actually practicing what he's preaching. I'm sorry, practicing what he's speaking, because I don't know that he's going to be able to find that zone I, I think I think the zone is with comedy. Sure, you can make fun of this or that, but as soon as it becomes harmful and nasty, that is a line that shouldn't be crossed. We'll see if Bill is able to find it, but let's forget about Bill Maher for a moment and let's consider the Christian church. How are we doing? Are we perhaps less thrilled to be a part of the community of faith than we once were because, well... This person didn't give a thumbs up to that tweet. Maybe just maybe it's time for us to learn exactly how we might learn to respond better. Courtesy of Bill Maher next on Wretched Radio. If you would like to see the entire episode of the snippet you're watching and perhaps check out my piano chops, simply visit wretched.org. My sister-in-law, not very bright, named all of her kids Bible names. So there I am, playing with my nephew, The Message. (laughs) I'm kidding, that's not really a Bible. And that is why Samson was the best comedian in the Bible. He brought the house down. He brews his own coffee. (laughs) He he brews. 